Good morning, how are you doing? Um, I'm so sorry, day three wasn't live yesterday. I had a teething baby, a overtired four-year-old. Uh, Matt was at work. It was just one of those days, you know, sometimes you just need to uh, bed down and do less. And um, yeah, that it was one of those days. So I'm going to combine day three and day four of this Let's Get Visible challenge. And I want to make it really practical. I feel like the stuff that I want to share today is really going to set you up for the week, especially in the busy, crazy times that we're up to at the moment. So if you've known of my work or you've worked with me personally or you've bought a course or something like that, morning, morning, you'll know that... Um, I am a big dreamer, I'm a big thinker, morning, morning, but I'm also really practical because I can have a to-do list as long as my arm and um, it can be a trap, you know, you're constantly like, I've got to take this off, I've got to do that and I've got to do that and actually the way that I changed my business five years ago and the way that I do things, actually I work in reverse. So I work to the point where it's like, how can I do this thing and make it work for me time and time again? And that has had a lot of mindset stuff with it as well because sometimes there's that feeling of like, yeah, but who am I to do that? Can I do that? Is that gonna be okay? Or um, I was, grow you know, I grew up in that very much like, these are the number of hours you work every single week and this is what you do and this is how it rolls. So um, yeah, it's definitely been a process. So day three's title, which is yesterday, I'm gonna combine the two. Day's three title was, Gladiator, you can go on. You should go on my first whistle. And I just wanted to bring a bit of tongue-in-cheek '90s uh, pop culture right there. But um, the reason I want to say this is if you can go back to gladiators, that moment where somebody has their foot on the line and they're really focused on what they have to do. So one of the games that I was thinking about when I was sort of mind mapping this is that one where you take a ball or you have to take it out and you have to go and slam it in the net before the gladiator comes and knocks you over. And this has been incredible in terms of a visual for me when I have to get focused, when I have to think about what I need to do. So what I want to talk about with this is in terms of marketing, in terms of your own visibility, because the temptation can be to do all of the things and to be here and everywhere and having conversations and having, um, having time with people, but it's not sort of focused. So when I'm thinking about my visibility, what I'm thinking about is how can I get from A to B, as in like my foot starting with my foot behind the line and actually going for it and slam dunking it, which sounds very um, extreme and that's kind of not like I'm going to put up a video and now you've got to watch it. But it helps me in terms of my focus. Why am I doing the thing that I'm doing. Why? What's my intention behind it? What is the point to all of this? One of the things that I see a lot is people are going to, they're starting with the intention of going, people say that you should post once a day. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to post once a day, whatever it might be, and tick, I've done that off the list. But my question in that is, okay, great, you've posted once a day, but what has it gained you? What has been the point of it? And of course, like, you know, I did a silly video yesterday where I bought this hat years ago and I thought it was all Vogue. Turns out it wasn't. It was all, consider yourself Oliver. You like, yeah, not a good look. But I did that silly thing because, you know, it made me laugh. I wanted to share it. You know, lots of people were DMing and being in that conversation and it was just me being really silly. But I want you to think in terms of morning, morning, your content for this week and why you want to use this platform and why you're consuming the stuff that you want to, uh, that you are doing on a daily basis. And I think it's about being really strategic. So I know certainly over the last few months when I've had children at home, we haven't had childcare, um, I've had to really make those choices work for me and really question like, why am I doing that thing? Am I talking about something that's ultimately going to be useful or am I just waffling on? And it could be that I was just waffling on. So I had to think about what was that process and where I was taking people. 
So this week I want you to consider what are going to be the points, the A to B points that you want to take to get you where you need to get to. Because otherwise what can happen is you're just going to end up working harder. You're going to work all your weekends, all your evenings, and I realise I'm working on a weekend, but you know, I wanted to have some clear time to solid work today, so that was a decision I make. I don't usually work Sundays. But I want you to think about starting from that line, like where do you want to get to? How can you get more visible in the most streamlined way? One example that works really well for me is my podcast. So it works morning, morning. My podcast works well because I found a rhythm with it. And this is what I've noticed time and time again with any kind of content, with any consistency or growth or things that I've happened in my business. Even though, so there's this fine line, isn't there, between doing something out of your comfort zone. So when I started the podcast, it was out of my comfort zone because I'd never done a podcast before. I um, was worried that people might listen to it. (laughs) Oh, the irony. Um, I was worried people would listen to it. I was worried that people would judge it or what people would think or if I could do it or who was I to have a podcast or the mind set shit basically um i was going to say shifts but it was shit there was a lot of shit sorry if you've got small people around um so i did that in the beginning and i didn't have you know i knew that was out of my comfort zone but ultimately there was obviously something in me that was like yeah there's something in this there's a way that i'm going to be able to make this work for myself And that's what I want you to recognize in terms of the way that you're showing up. That first, when you do it, it might be like, oh my goodness, it feels out of my comfort zone to do a revealing post. Not like revealing, but you know, a a more candid, more visible post every single day. But ultimately, you will find your way of saying, okay, this type of content is going to be really great for me. And what you're looking for every step of the way in terms of your visibility is thinking, how can I make this really doable? So if I had to do a different podcast on um, uh, quadratic equation, I can't even say the word, quadratic, quad, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, equations, fractions, I was fairly good at maths. I was in the top set, happy days. But would that be a topic that I could talk about all day long, every day? Probably not. And there would probably be people who would be much better at doing that than I would morning, morning. So what I want you to consider is what are those topics, what are those pillars that you could talk about every single day? And then what is the right vehicle or the right format or formula um, to do that? And how can you not only do that consistency consistently, But how can you continue to use that piece of content again and again? And this is where, certainly as busy people, I'm going to say women as well because I am one, um, this is when I've seen the growth of my business really skyrocket by understanding this one thing that I can do lots of different things. I haven't um, actually purchased this, but I've seen him talking about it. Um, So the concept of Jamie Oliver's latest book is that he's picked out, I think it's the most, 12 most popular things or 20 most popular things um, that people buy in the supermarket. And then he shares, I think it's, oh, I mean, I should really do is um, he then gives you seven things that you can do with this one particular item of food and he's recognized that actually this is how we're all living we're all going right I've got you know we've all done it we go to the fridge and I'm like okay I've got a chicken breast what can I do with this or I've got a piece of salmon or um oh mushrooms how can I make these work and that's how you want to think about in your content so sometimes the build-up can be um you know creating that one perfect picture for the gram for the grid but what else can you do with that where can you send it how can you reshape it how can you move it all around um it'll be really interesting if you think about it in that way because once you start Start to uncover those things that's when you're like oh right I can make it into a blog post I can pull something out of it I can make it into a quote and you can really make that content work for you the second thing I want to say is what is in your bag of tricks already 
So this was the day four question. And I think the temptation, because we are bombarded with so much information all the time, the latest thing, you've got to buy this technology, this is the sales funnel technique, like everybody's moving over to LinkedIn. Oh my goodness, no, it's Pinterest, that's the thing. It can feel really overwhelming. And not everything is appropriate for your business or your brand. For example, Twitter is something I... I just don't enjoy hanging out on the platform. I don't feel like I'm set up to win on Twitter. I don't know how to optimize it. I don't know how to make it work in the best possible way. So I want you to think about your own bag of tricks right now. And I want you to recognize that you are not starting from scratch. So even if you're at that point where you're like, yeah, I need to up my game online or I'm starting to pivot my business in a slightly different way and I'm gonna be working in this way rather than that, or it's a brand new business and brand and you've retrained in some kind of ways. I don't want you to underestimate all of the transferable skills, experience, storytelling, all of these things that you're coming to the table. And I see it so often that people go, okay, this is me. It's the snakes and ladders moment. They go all the way back to number one and they're like, here I am. I'm starting now, off we go. Now, if I was transitioning from someone who had a portfolio career to being an actor, uh, from being an actor, coach, writer, speaker, podcaster, and then suddenly I was like, guys, I am now a surgeon in a hospital. I just wanted to let you know that. I'm available to do all the things. Uh, there may be a few questions asked and probably the things that I'm talking about on Instagram wouldn't necessarily be useful as I was performing surgery. But there would be a lot of those skills that I would be able to transfer into becoming a surgeon. For example, having really good people skills, listening, understanding what people's needs are, knowing when um, people are in a position to move forward or if there's something else that they um, may benefit from. You know, they're very different careers, of course, but ultimately, if you are the common thread throughout that, you have to understand all those skills and values and everything that you have to the table. Because you know what, it's really time and it's an invitation that I want to give you to start playing bigger, to start sharing more of what it is. And I feel really passionate about this in terms of my industries and I feel passionate about it in terms of yours. You will, I'm sure, morning, morning, have seen so many similar trends conversations, the same languages, you know, you will know that stuff about your own career, your own sector, your own industry, where it's like, oh no, people are doing that awful template thing, people are doing the same thing. So how can you bring your already fully formed, excellent bag of tricks, your tools, your skills, your techniques to the table and do things in a different way. So yesterday, again, just to um, refer back to that silly video that I did of dancing, like that um, is something that I haven't really shared with the internet. I mean, I was a trained dancer for many years and I went to stage school and all of that sort of stuff. So if somebody kind of was like, right, get your leotard on. Okay, we're gonna go five, six, seven, like I'm ready. I'm in the moment. I'm like, okay, what do you need me to do? I mean, I'm a bit rusty. Let's just say that because I'm 38 and I've had two children. But I feel, I would like to think that I could get those things back. So in terms of using something like Instagram Reels, that is an easy way. Again, it's going back to like, what is the easiest way to be able to do this. That's much easier for me just to do some kind of silly dance rather than the pointing ones where I'd be like, oh, I've, oh no, I've pointed to the wrong thing. Oh, the, it, yeah, do you see what I mean? So I want you to think about your bag of tricks. So before you feel like you have to reinvent this whole thing for next week and go, oh my goodness, right, the whole thing needs an overhaul, the whole thing, I'm gonna have to start again, change my brand colors, do something different. Think about what you've already got because I bet there are notebooks or scribbles or Word documents on your computer or conversations that you've had or experiences with clients or stories or funny things that you can share right now. Think about pulling those out and having those conversations and being, morning Vicky, being in the mix right now. This pressure to constantly 
keep showing up and reinventing ourselves, my God, it is exhausting. And, you know, the life circumstances that are going on as well, we have to work really strategically. We have to really work in our zone of genius. If you haven't read that book um, by Gay Hendricks, The Big Leap, I can highly recommend it. He talks a lot about working in your zone of genius. And I've really learned how to do that by imagining, and I want you to do the same, this is a really good visual, of thinking about a sculpture, which is your personal brand, and slowly starting to chip away at what you want the final version to look like. So um, sometimes it's about, you know, going, "Mm, I'm gonna lose a bit more of this now. Or you see it when people, I don't know, uh, graduate from uni, they go to their first graduate job. And on paper, like it's good and it's fine and it's easy peasy, but slowly as they start to move, they're like, I'm just gonna lose that bit. I I don't know why I'm signing off emails in that way because my boss told me at that company I should do that. It never felt right. So they start to kind of sculpt it away. So that's how I want you to see your personal brand is like turning things and also quite often with like a sculpture, I mean, look at me talking all arty now, like it can look different in different lights. So it can look different from a different angle or a different perspective or when you're next to somebody. So my personal brand um, 14 months ago when I was about to have my daughter, even though it was the same sort of vibe, the same sort of shape, I was looking at things from a very different angle. I was looking at, okay, over the next couple of months while I've got a newborn, how can I make this work passively? How can I um, show up and deliver and still grow my business, which I have done, by the way. Um, Over the last year, my gross volume of sales has gone up something like, it's more, it's something like six something now. But when I did this video a while ago, it was by 517% and I've worked less. And I know people on the internet say that, um, and I'll you can watch the video. I, I've, I did a video on it basically saying exactly what I did. Um, and But that's because I was thinking about it in a strategic way. I was like, how can I turn this on? I wasn't, even though I almost tempted was tempted to, which again is a old habit of mine that I've had to watch. So I won a um, all day workshop on how to write a book in May last year. So I had Luna in August 2019. And I somehow did this thing where I was like, right, I've got to write my book proposal for my second book. It's got to be amazing. It's got to be a masterpiece. It's got to be a Sunday Times bestseller. I've got to do that before I give birth. Why? Why was I thinking? Like, and I haven't even thought about that book now. I've parked it. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to think about it in a different way further down the line. So I want to give you in summary, to give yourself full permission to think about what is the easiest and the most comfortable, and I say comfortable because when we're thinking about getting visible, like it's the most uncomfortable thing sometimes, because certainly in my school it was like, shut up, sit down, oh my God, he's got the right answer, I can't believe it, don't look at him, chuck something at his head, that was my school. It was rowdy. It wasn't about being ambitious. It wasn't saying, do you know what? I would love to build a a dream life and family and, you know, earn money. And, you know, we weren't talking about that. It was about being excited about a bank holiday. You know, the amount of people that you'd meet in the town centre and uh, where people would just be excited about a bank holiday because they were going to go and get a new sofa on discount. Like, I love a new sofa as much as... um, you know, the next person. But ultimately, there is other stuff that I want for my life. And that freedom and flexibility is so important. So I want you to think about your content for this week. What do you want to do? Um, How do you want to show up? If you would like my support, um, it's a year since I launched Speak Up, my um, speaking program. This is not just about speaking in a terrible suit in large conference centres, This is about speaking up, whether that's creating a masterclass that really resonates with your audience. This is about showing who you are online, in person. You know, not in a Piers Morgan, let's tell all life stories type way, but actually feeling like you, writing something, presenting something where you come off the back of it and people meet you in real life and they're like, oh, you're the same person.
that we want to be you know if i met somebody and they'd been listening to the podcast and they met me in person they were like oh you're nothing like that that sounds really weird uh oh right okay not sure that's the opposite effect that you want to have you want to feel like somebody's going to connect with you and um be able to yeah connect with you it's ultimately what i've got to say if you've missed day one and day two they are in my instagram igtv highlights um but if you're interested in joining speak up do so there's two options so there's one where you can just work through the program yourself and there's a second option that involves time with me um support so uh, a client has recently joined me a couple of days ago where she's actually bought another course but she's signed up to work with me for six months because she's like I'm going to learn all these things in the course and now I need to work with you to make sure I actually do the things that I've done in the course so buying the course is not the end game it's not like oh I bought the course now I'm done tick it's about the implementation like what you're going to do with it because so many people they buy these courses they sign up for the things and they don't do the stuff and um, it's all really actionable really practical all that good stuff so you can go over to my website nikkiraby.com forward slash speak up um, have a lovely Sunday whatever you're doing and I'll be back tomorrow for day five. Lots of love and I'll see you soon.